anything in agriculture right now is sales because people eat anything that is available. They eat anything. Like anything that is on the market, they, that's what people will consume. We, we are used to the seasonality of produce, so people will eat. When it's cocoa yam season, people eat more cocoa yams. When it's cassava, simply eat more cassava. When it's mangoes, simply eat more, more mangoes. Thank you all for joining us on another episode of IWI Marketplace Chit Chat, where we give the, the opportunity for entrepreneurs to talk about themselves and what they do. Right here, I'm with Roland Fomundam, and he is uh, a social entrepreneur. So, Roland, can you please introduce yourself? This is usually one of the most difficult questions I get. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Roland Fomundam. I'm the brain behind uh, the company called Greenhouse Ventures. Uh, Greenhouse Ventures is uh, a leading company introducing uh, the climate smart uh, greenhouse technology in Cameroon and other countries of West and Central Africa. Uh, for those who probably don't understand what a greenhouse technology is, um, it is a uh, metallic structure covered in plastic which is used to grow food. Uh, we can grow almost all types of produce and we can grow year round without any interruption. Uh, so with what we do, we have been able to introduce several types of crops uh, on the con in the country that were not normally grown here. We've introduced them in several supermarkets. And amazingly, we've actually been able to destabilize the importation of certain things that we could grow because we realized that it didn't make any sense that Cameroon produces tomatoes and we still have to import tomatoes. It's, 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 that's a, a of some crazy stuff. Uh, we can grow bell peppers, but we still import bell peppers. So we've, we've been able to do that. And there's several things. And we're introducing many more um, into the market. And we hope that someday we could, we could fully consume things that are grown on Cameroonian soil at a Cameroonian price. So I think that's a little bit of uh, what we have. But I'm sure in the course of the conversation, we would get to uh, talk more and I can also share more about some of the things that we're working on. Wow, wow. I'm really glad that, you know, you're doing uh, this amazing stuff, you know, producing uh, bell pepper and, and all of that, you know. But I, let's get this question out of the way. You know, I just wish to find out, like, what, you know, inspired you to move back to Cameroon and start up uh, your business, I mean, given, given that most people would like to just stay abroad. Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, you know, most people who end up staying abroad is, I don't think they, they decided to like it. I think you get to a point where you realize that, you know, you cannot go back your stock, so you just, you're just forced to like it. If many people had the options, believe me, you know it, they, they will move back. Um, because there are a lot of things that are happening back at home that you feel to be a part of. Uh, and, and for me, it was one of those things. I, I realized early on that uh, um, I could do better in Cameroon. I could be more valuable in Cameroon. So I wanted to start finding ways that I would have to live back in Cameroon, not live out here. I realized that most people who came to the U.S., the plan is that everybody wants to move back home. Nobody moves to the U.S. planning to live there forever. It's just that sometimes they, they get there and then they are stuck and then they just realize, okay, we can't go back. So I realized that if we have to make that move back, you have to plan it very early. Um, but planning is one thing and then making that move is another. So I needed some catalyst that would actually instigate my movement back. So the idea was, okay, if you have to move back home, what would you do? How do you do and all of that? I wasn't coming back home to say I want to get a job with the government. I wasn't coming back home that I want, I have some family member or some friend to give me some employment. I understood that if I had to come back home and live the way I wanted to live, then it would mean that I have to create the platform for myself. Uh, and then looking at it, you have to think of which industry could best absorb you. Uh, what most people don't understand is that I started education as a pharmacist. And uh, three years into it, I realized that you know, uh, I don't think pharmacy is what would take me in the long run. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against, I like, you know, everybody has what they have to do, you know. Um, I just realized that that it wasn't really for me. I didn't see myself going to school for six years, 
working for somebody for maybe at least 10 years, trying to save up money, and then thinking I have to move back to Cameroon. I realized if I follow that route, it would take a lot of time and it would be more difficult to move back to Cameroon after, after you've implanted yourself there that long. And uh, looking at it again, I realized, okay, you know, business is something that, you know, you could recruit many more people. You can work with any industry. So I diverted into business. But now the key was, what do you do in business? At the time, of course, um, sustainable technologies was what we needed in the country. Farming was something that has always been of great need. I think it was a niche market that no one was taking advantage of. Uh, if you look at countries like Israel, Holland, Spain, America, China, I mean, the advancements they've made in agriculture, they are enormous. Um, so when you look at that, you can now see, okay, where Cameroon or Africa would be in the next 10, 20, 30 years. So I remember 12 years ago when I started this, and I used to write a lot about what I see the future of agriculture being, and I would make claims as, you know, someday greenhouses would be everywhere and People will laugh, and but I I knew where it's coming to, you know. So uh, for me, it was just identifying an opportunity, uh, and then being able to grab that opportunity with every mind that I have, and that's what we've been able to do to now. Wow, that that's amazing. I, I I've known you for several years. I was in New York, and you were in Boston, and I was like, who is this Cameroonian studying at Northeastern? I have to connect with him, and that's how I reached out to you. And I remember, I remember that your, day. <laughs> I've been following your work and you're doing amazing stuff. I'm really proud of you. But right Thank now you. you're in Cameroon. You're welcome. Right now you're in Cameroon. Can you tell us some of the profitable agricultural business that, you know, people can invest in that is big, young people in Cameroon and people who want to move back also from abroad? Yes, investment in agriculture is uh, it's, it's, it's very, very uh, lucrative if you know how to maximize it very well. You see, I want to answer that question by telling you what, what the problem in agriculture is because until you understand the problem, then you would understand what the solution is. You see, the problem in Cameroon is that uh, uh, the farmer is not the marketer. And the marketer is not the farmer. So it creates a gap which you have a lot of middlemen in the middle. So you have something that is being harvested in Bamenda for like 100 francs. It is being sold in Douala for, for 1,000. But the farmer has only earned maybe about 10 francs in that, in that whole process. But the middleman has earned about 700 francs. You see what I'm saying? So it makes it in such a way that the farmer produces just so much for them to be enough. But the market, there's, there's a huge market. What I'm trying to say is that there's a huge market and we're unable to produce for that market. Because if you think about it, Cameroon feeds Central African Republic, feeds Chad, feeds Equatorial Guinea, feeds Gabon, feeds Nigeria, feeds Congo. You know, this is, a, this is a market of close to 320 million people. But only Cameroon has that power to feed that market. And you don't have people who are engaged in agriculture in the method that can actually feed that market. So uh, anything, first of all, agriculture, anything in agriculture is profitable. Now it depends how much profit are we looking at. Uh, I always advise people that short-term crops, that's where the money is at. Uh, I will never encourage anyone to go for any long-term crops. It makes no sense that you plant a crop today and you start harvesting after three years and you start making money then. It's, by the time you start making money, you probably already drowned. You know? But think of the fact that you have a crop that goes into soil today, and you know, in two months you're harvesting, you're already in the market. You realize that you're able to break even, even, even in your first year. But you have a product that has to last for three years before you start to harvest. What happens is that in three years, you've incurred a lot of expenses already. By the time you start harvesting during the third year, before you start breaking even, you break even maybe in about five years. About five years, imagine how much has already gone in. And that's the problem. Most people cannot last up to five years before they break even. So you have people who start businesses today and then they fail tomorrow and then they blame the country, they blame the market, they blame everybody. Simply because a market understanding and a market research wasn't really done. So people never really understood what is it that they have to do to make gains in the market. I mean, think about it. The Chinese come to Cameroon and they grow, they grow food in farms and they sell. The Indians do the same. The Lebanese do the same. 
why are we not taking advantage of that? So uh, there is no particular product in the market that gives profit. I think so. I think it's just the business model that you develop around any product. Because be it, be it a person selling bitter cola, be it a person selling sugarcane, be it a person selling bananas, be it a person selling granuts, they are making some sort of profit. It just depends how much profit and how you're able to tabulate those profit. You know, the problem is most farmers in Cameroon, if you ask them what is the cost of production, they will not tell you. If you ask them what is, you know, how do you, how do you make your, how do you target your, how do you define your price? They will not know. They just produce to dump everything on the market. So you produce today, whatever the market says is the price, you dump it and you, nobody cares. And that's a big problem, you see. So if wow. we can get to a point wow. where you are able to, you are able to define the price of your product, then you go for it. Like for example, what we do, we grow right now. We we are specialized in growing bell peppers. We have the largest. We are the largest producers of bell peppers in the entire country. Bell peppers, believe me, most people don't know about it, uh, but it sells very expensive. How did I get to producing bell peppers? I realized that the supermarkets are growing. I visited many supermarkets and realized what is the one product that most people buy more often. And then I realized that, okay, people buy a lot of bell peppers, who buy a lot of strawberries, and they buy them for very expensive. But where are these bell peppers and strawberries coming from? Some come from France, some come from South Africa, some come from Morocco. How come we're here and a country like Morocco, that is a desert, is selling food to Cameroon? Like, how, do you, how does that even make sense? So we get to producing those things. So now we produce bell peppers. So if you have to import bell peppers from France, what happens is that my bell peppers leave from my farm. In 30 minutes, they are on the shelf. But you have this in France. It takes at least 10 days by the time you get them into the container, get them out. And so even if they both produce have a shelf life of 14 days, mine have an extended shelf life because by the time yours get here, it's minus 10 days already. So you have four days wow. to sell. I have 14 days to sell. And we have the same quality products because they're all grown in greenhouses. That's the market right there. Wow. You see, so, so uh, and then I can command, I can command my price. Is it unlike the fact that okay, I have to go to the market and then I have to sell at the price that everybody sells? No, I don't do that. I sell at the price that I command, and that's what. And I command that price based on my cost of production. I just don't sell because everybody is selling this price. No, no, people don't grow the same way I grow my stuff. Wow. So that, that is it, it, it's that, yeah. So that just is. to give you, just to conclude on it. Um, anything in agriculture right now is sells because people eat anything that is available. They eat anything. Like anything that is on the market, they, that's what people will consume. We, we are used to the seasonality of produce, so people will eat. When it's cocoa yam season, people eat more cocoa yams. When it's cassava, simply eat more cassava. When it's mangoes, simply eat more, more mangoes. When it's guavas, you, you get what I'm saying? So right, anything, right. anything would always sell. People are always in need of food. And it right. depends now your source from market, from farm to market. How is that? You know, it makes no sense again that you still have to go kilometers into the bush just to go and get cheap land to produce. There's no point for you having land for 10,000 francs to produce and then it has to take you 500,000 to get it to market. I'd rather have a farm in the city where I know that I don't have to spend that much to bring it to market. That's why we have farms in the city. You see, but I have a farm in the city, that farm sells expensive. But again, the cost of transporting, I don't have that. The losing of crops before they get to market, I don't have that. So it's just that most people don't do some, like what Research. you will be offering to them, business consulting. Most, you know, they realize that, okay, I, I mean, farming, I don't need to consult anybody. But of course, you know that people consult a doctor. A doctor is a medical consultant. A lawyer is a legal consultant. You understand? A business consultant is there, but farming consultants are also there. Get to a farmer, get to a business, ask them what is it you need to do to profit. And that's what most people don't believe that they need to be doing. So um, the industry is very profitable. People just need to do their homework and do it right. Wow. I mean, you've really identified several problems in the agricultural sector in Cameroon. And from, from, by just by identifying this problem, it shows that you already have your solution. So there are so many... Uh, people that I know, including myself, that are interested to come and invest in farming. Do you provide any service to, you know, help us establish? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's, that's why we're here. You know, one of the reasons I, I left the U.S. very early 
I understood that at some point, uh, many of us were moving back home because that's always the ambition. When we get to America, we say, okay, after school, after work, we start to move back home. So my idea was, okay, I move early now, create a bridge so that many of my brothers and sisters, by the time they begin to move, at least it's, it's easy. And that's what we've been doing. I consult with several individuals in the diaspora who are looking to have businesses in Cameroon. And it's something I love to do. So yes, um, if you have, if you are out there, um, you have land or you have an interest in doing anything in agriculture, um, if I cannot solve your problem, I can always direct you to somebody who can solve your problem. Uh, I think it is that. We, we, we have a network on the ground. We, we talk amongst ourselves and uh, we always ready to share, to share ideas. Uh, my goal is that I want to see many more of us doing this. You know, it makes sense that I turn to my right, I find a fellow brother or sister do having a farm or doing some investment, turn to my left, front, back. I see that, you know, but when you turn around, you find a Chinese on this side, you turn to your left, you find a Lebanese, you turn behind, you see a Chinese, you turn in front, you see a French. My brother, man, it's, it, it's tough. It, it's tough. It, it's tough. I mean, at some point, you just have to go along with them because it's only them that you see. Right, but I would right. wish that I could turn around and I'd see my brothers and sisters and we'll make this thing happen, you know, because, I mean, we, we, we go to America and we complain that it is tough out there, but those guys are coming here and they're having it easy. And then we are here and we're saying it's difficult. I mean, how does a foreigner come to your own country and say it's easier here? You know, it's, it's just, there are things that do not even make sense. So uh, I, I think I, I am very vocal on my, on, my, on my platforms. As much as I'm so busy, I, I really try to respond to as many people that really come with some credible, uh, that come with credible concerns. Some people just come to disturb me and, you know, I cannot, I cannot respond to everybody. So I think I'm always there. I'm always open um, so, through my, my, my Facebook, my, 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 my different contacts, my company, everything. I'm always open to, to help out in any way I can. So I see, I see you have a training program that uh, will be starting very soon. Can you tell us more about the program? What will people get when they, when they sign up? And, you know, what are the benefits of uh, attending this agricultural business program? So one thing, thank you for, for, for bringing that up. Um, one of the things that we have done, you know, I am always looking at doing things that no one is doing. Um, it, it's very, very challenging because you have to pave the way you have to break the wave and pave it and then make sure that others can, can follow through. Uh, so, yes, we, we opened the Greenhouse Academy. And the idea of the academy was because we realized that we're getting so many clients. I mean, so many customers, so many people were interested in agriculture. Um, and there's a huge market. And you have people who have money, who have land, and they are unable to meet up the production because they don't have human resource. Uh, we, we wanted to find a way to train human resource so that they can manage our farms and those of our partners. So that's the whole idea of the Greenhouse Academy. Um, secondly, we are also bringing experts, not only Cameroonians, but people from abroad, who have varied experiences, who have long-term success in, in different domains of agriculture to come in and share their lessons with us because that's the only way we can get better and better. So with what we are doing with the, with the, with the Greenhouse Academy, um, we, 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 we get students who we train, and upon graduation, we, we, we give them jobs, either on our farms or farms of our partners. Uh, but that's not all. Um, we, we, we also provide, um, we have a curriculum that is in two models. Uh, we have a certificate program, which is three months. We have a diploma program, which is six months. And you know it, agriculture is, is on the farm. It's not in classrooms. So for the certificate, we have a one month in classroom and two months out of the classroom. And for the diploma, we have two months in class and four months on the, thing, on the fields. But the unique thing about it is that we can guarantee anyone a job as long as you go through our training program. Because we have a lot of farms. We have a lot of individuals who want to have farms. And the only thing we are really missing right now is individuals to be able to manage this farm. So job, job certainty is one side. We are also looking at ways that we can begin to uh, finance farms for individuals. So you graduate from us, we can finance a farm from you because one thing we do to all our clients is that we provide a market for them. So if you, Ivan, today you have a farm, 
we will tell you that we will buy everything that you do harvest. If you lie yourself to us, that's fine. If you like you, if you find a market for yourself, that's still fine. We just want to make sure that everything that comes out of your farm has a market. So we can guarantee a market for anybody who comes out of our program. And the reason we are strict to our program is because there are things that we train that you don't train from any agricultural school in the country. You see, so there's some level of quality assurance that we do get. And we make sure that, you know, you go through our program and going through our program, we are sure that you have some basic skills uh, that you can now take and, and do a very good work with it. Uh, the other aspect also is that um, we, we, we are getting to a point where we, we want to even start having farms that we can rent out. So we want to build our farms on our own land and you we train you and you can just come there and rent a farm for a period of time. But everything that you harvest, we want to assure that there is a market for it. So there are many, many advantages that uh, you get uh, going through our platforms from just getting uh, a guaranteed job, uh, getting a refinance on, on a greenhouse, from being able to rent a greenhouse from us, uh, and much more. So, I mean, we're just getting started. Uh, the future looks very bright. We believe that as long as we continue to build a family that continues to work with us, we can do many, many things in many ways. Wow, wow, Roland, that is a very brilliant idea. I'm learning a lot and I really love all you've just said. Uh, but still, we have so many unemployed youths back home and probably they're they looking for one or two ways, you know, to create employment for themselves. How do you, what are the tips you can give them to get started uh, in a profitable agricultural business like what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, the, the key thing is people need to be decisive. You know, you have a lot of those people who tell you that they're looking for jobs, but they are not actually looking for jobs, you know, because when the job comes, they don't want to do the job. You see, that, that's the problem that we have. If, if, you know, you ask them, you find a simple who's looking for a job who is trying to travel, the same person who's looking for a job who is trying to do something else. You know, people are not very focused. So that's, that's always a, a challenging aspect. But yeah, um, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, looking at what to do, agriculture is the only field that can actually, you know, uh, cut down unemployment in Cameroon and in Africa in a heartbeat. You know, it's the only, it's the only industry that can employ all Cameroonians and there will still be need for, for many people to be employed because no amount of food will ever be enough. No amount of food. If, even if, you know, all, all 27 million Cameroonians get into farming today, there will still be a need on the marketplace. You see what I'm saying? So there is always that. I think people just need to understand their realities. Where are they? What do they have? What don't they have? What do they need? What can they do? What skills do they have? You see, somebody will say they want to have a job, but they don't have the skills for that job. For them to even go and learn the skill, they don't want to learn it. They don't have the patience. They don't have the time. They don't want to do anything. So it's very, it's very tricky sometimes. You know, people come to you, they cry that they want a job. Then you give them a job next, then the, the following month, you don't find them on the job. Or the moment you pay them their first salary, they are gone. You know, they start telling you, oh, I have a death celebration. I am sick. I am that. And then when, them, when the salary is finished, they come back and they want, they're begging you all that. Please forgive me. They want a job. I mean, it's crazy. I, I, try, I try not to categorize people or group them like that. But it's something that has become common over and over. Many people uh, do the same thing. And you begin to feel that maybe this is, this is the norm. But I try not to think that is the norm. I think there are some people out there who are genuine, who really want uh, to do something. And yes, until we can meet those people, uh, and then we can always push them further. But um, in terms of somebody looking for something to do, I would say agriculture is always a good field, you know, uh, because the, 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 uh, the barriers to entry are less. You know, there is so much land. I mean, take an area shot of Cameroon, my brother you realize that the inhabitants will occupy only about 5% of the land. About 95% is, is, not, is not habited yet. And it's arable. So we can farm almost any place. Do an aerial view of a country like Cameroon and then do that of Kenya. You will realize that we are not even doing anything. You see, so there is room in that space. But like I say again, there's room in many more areas. I will speak more of agriculture because that's my, my, my speciality. There's room in many more areas, but people need to be really decisive and decided 
as to what is it they want to do, how they want to do it, and the ways and what they want to benefit out of that. Okay, that's, that's so nice. And I'm really glad that, you know, still you're identifying uh, so many problems with the youth. And I'm pretty sure you're trying to do something in order to encourage them to, you know, be more focused. Because uh, it's in the mindset, like you said, I've lived in Asia and I've seen how people are focused in producing rice and selling it for the... Uh, uh, government and then they're able to ship worldwide you know every unemployment in thailand is one percent why because people are ready to do the work so there are so many people who would like to invest in what you're doing can you just briefly give us you know what it takes to you know sign up for an investment package with your greenhouse ventures and uh what benefits they will get if they sign up very brief. We, we have a very high demand on us, so high on us, and we can only produce so much, you know. Um, so in one way, we have contacted people who want to have farms, and we manage it, and then sell everything and pay them the proceeds. So you out there, you can have your land, you have your money. Um, we set up your farm, just like how we can build your house, we put tenants in it, and we just pay you your rents. You see, it's, it's as easy as that. Uh, we can do that. Um, there, are, there are people who want to come with cash investments. We have several programs that we've developed, uh, which is not more like an investment, it's more, more like a lease. So a lease model says that, okay, um, you come to us, you rent a greenhouse, um, and we pay you the proceeds from that particular greenhouse for a period of three years. Um, and after that, the greenhouse comes back to us and everybody goes even. So an example is, um, say, for example, you, you, you lease a taxi from us. You know, you, 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 you come to us, you lease a taxi, but that taxi, we are managing it. Uh, we have the customers already and everything. And then every year, we just pay you proceeds uh, for the period of, and then you make a good return on your investments to the point where, you know, you've made your return and then we can split off and, and everybody goes their way. Um, so, yeah, anyone who's interested in that, uh, they can send me, um, they can get to me and then we'll be able to give them more information on that and, and how it goes, uh, how they can be involved and everything. Okay, uh, before we go, uh, can you just give some, you know, tips on how, you know, we can make agriculture profitable in Cameroon, like, you know, it's being done in different places. In the U.S., you have large farms, that are able to supply the whole country. And in Mexico, you get large farms producing avocado, which is shipped in the U.S. In Thailand, they, they, they are the number one producers of rice, you know. What is happening with Cameroon and how can we get to that level? <clears throat> now, you know, uh, the problem that Cameroon has, it's the problem that Cameroon has, it has, uh, and I will go a little political, it's... Uh, um, the problem we have in Cameroon is that, uh, and most African countries, it has something to do with, uh, you know, the, 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 the crisis that stems from colonialism. Um, uh, and, and it is a fact that we, we have never looked at agriculture as a big, a big priority for us to focus on. You understand? Um, if you look at a country like Kenya, when they started, they had no oil. They had no gold, diamond, any of that. And all they had was agriculture. So they went to agriculture and they focused on agriculture. And today, they're the fourth largest exporters of flowers in the entire world. If you go, to, if you come to Cameroon and other countries that had other things besides agriculture, like Nigeria, like Cameroon, we, had oil, we focused on oil. And now we are getting a crisis of oil and everybody now is trying to move into agriculture. You see, so uh, it, it, we, are, we are just waking up right now to the benefits of this. But I think we are not too late, even though we are late. I think if we have to get into agriculture, then we all have to get in. There needs to be some community of farmers that are working together. And then the other thing that Colonial Masters also did is that they lied to us a lot about You realize that most of our farmers are focused on cash crops, but cash crops actually makes farmers very poor. You know, but and you don't find it. So why are we, why do we do cash crops and they do food crops? 
and then we think that we'll make money. No. Find out how what they're doing. You don't find any white country anywhere growing cocoa and coffee. We're the only ones doing it. And then we expect that we can break even. So we need to we need to we need to wipe off that that mentality and then get to what we really need to do right now and is to do the agriculture that is is profitable that we believe that put food on our table and for us to do that we need to share information for us to do that we need to work together for us to do that we need to collaborate it makes no sense that we are in cameroon and we have to import our seeds from france to grow in cameroon how come we are not multiplying our own seeds you understand i mean it, it, it just doesn't make sense. We, we would depend on whole land to produce our seeds. Those guys will sell us the seeds that do not make any sense. That's why day day they are producing, you find them producing tons and tons of produce. And then we are here, we use the same seeds we don't because they give us different seeds. We have to understand that we live in a world that we have an economic war. The day that Africa can sustain itself, the day that Africans can feed themselves, the white man has nothing to do again with us. And they will never allow that. There's no interest that a white man has to allow. I mean, you understand what I'm saying, bro? Right. I know this, 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 this is a hard talk, but this is not something that you read in any classroom, in any textbook. But these are just the realities of stuff. You understand? The day that Africa can feed itself, that we will not need any NGO in Africa. We will not need any, anybody giving us any donations. Does it make any sense that when the FAO wants to donate food to an African country, they go to America to buy food and fly it over all the continents to supply to a country, whereas the neighboring country to that very country is supplying food in excess. You, you get what I'm saying? Right. They don't have that interest to propagate it. So it is only Africans that have to develop Africa. And, I'm not, and I, I didn't say Cameroonians, I said Africans. Because you realize that America is 50 countries in one. Europe is so many countries in one. Russia is so many countries in one. India is so many countries in one. China is so many countries in one. Africa is the only continent that you have all countries all divided. You get me? And right. because of that, we are divided along every line and we have not learned to work together. So it is very important that we start to break down all these barriers that they have between us and we find ways to work together. Because if Africa alone can get together, there's no country in the world that will produce more than us. And we are the only continent in the world that can still produce organic food. There's no continent in the world that can stick to the organic food like Africa. We have more arable land than any other continent in the world. We have more water. We have more of everything, brother. We have more labor. We have everything. But they keep making us believe that we don't have it. We keep trying to go and do, want to do oil. We want to... Very soon, everybody goes electric, electric cars. Nobody will need the petrol that we, we're using today. Be, be, before you go up, before you go up, sorry. Uh, you're talking about the training program. I probably didn't say it. Um, we have Kenyans who are here with us to teach. And why are Kenyans? Kenyans, of course, in Africa right now, they are more advanced in agriculture than any other African country. And we believe that for us to do great, we have to bring people who are greater for us to teach us. Uh, if we live from here and go to Kenya, we can only learn from there, but it's difficult to bring it here. So bringing the Kenyans here so they can teach us right on our own soil and we can implement everything, I think it is a winning proposal. So I, I have set up a, a training program uh, for the time. They're going to be here for at least six months. Um, and I want that during those six months, we can tour all around Cameroon and train as many people as we can train. Because I believe that agriculture in Cameroon needs a, face, a facelift. So, yes, uh, if you can sponsor somebody for the program, if you can refer somebody to the program, if you can bless somebody with a program, um, believe me, they would be very, very grateful to you. Um, we can only reach so many people, myself and I, Ivan, standing uh, right here. But again, those of you online, you can share this as much. Um, follow us uh, and, and, and get the message to as many people as you can because I believe that change can only come if we begin to share information that is very vital to our own growth and to our own progress. So I don't want to take up much time. Um, I am very frequent on Facebook. I will try to start getting more and more on Instagram. I think I also have some following on Twitter. But please, um, always join, always follow. I am always available to share tips. And I wish that someday we can uh, get into a community where we can do a lot more together. So thank you all, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you so much, Roland, and stay blessed. Thank, Thank you, you all again, for watching. Brother. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you all for brother. watching and 
We are out. Peace.